Hey, what's up you guys? Welcome back. Today I'm walking you through this look step by step. This is one of my favorite looks to do around this time of year because it's very warm and spicy, but also very wearable at the same time. I always do some kind of version of this look right here every single fall. So I hope you guys like this tutorial. I hope you enjoy all of the steps that I give. Please let me know what other videos you'd like to see from me down below in the comment section. Please subscribe and let's get started. I'm actually gonna start this off by putting my hair up in my i think it was like my makeup haul video i got a lot of requests for a hair tutorial on my hair that's literally what i did it was already curled but it was really dirty so all i did was just throw it up in like a messy bun and that's all and i just pulled down any of the pieces but i think the trick to make it look cute is that it was already curled so the tendrils or your bangs or whatever kind of do like so let's get started with the makeup so i want to start with the new well, i don't know if it's new but it's new to me the wet n wild impossible primer i saw tati talk about this primer she's saying it's like one of the best face primers so i'm gonna try it today i usually don't like primers that are very silicone like this so we'll see kind of what happens okay that's weird it kind of felt like water when i put it on that's weird mm, what does that smell i can't put my finger on what this smells like but it's familiar that actually does feel really good on the skin normally with primers of that consistency i'm normally not a fan a side note really quick before we get into the makeup in two weeks i'm going to get my hair done and i'm thinking i want to go just a little bit more dimensional with my hair keep it pretty blonde but i don't know i'm thinking somewhere along the lines of this and i feel like if, I feel like if you're not a platinum you're gonna see this and be like that's barely a change but if you normally go for a more platinum blonde look you're gonna be like wow very different but um, yeah, especially on camera as I'm looking at this, this looks like extremely blonde. I'm thinking of getting some longer extensions, adding in some dimension, getting, I don't know, just a little bit more going on. I love this one too. This is from my hairstylist. This one kind of freaks me out because it's a little bit more honey-y, but I don't know. I feel like I've just been doing like bleach blonde hair for so long because I wanted it just right for our wedding. And we've been, we were engaged for like almost four years. So it was like, I didn't want to do anything different with my hair because I didn't want to ruin it before the wedding. So now that that's kind of like past us i just want to do something different i'm ready for a change so back to makeup i'm gonna go into the catrice true skin hydrating foundation i'm in the shade 20 warm beige i've used this a couple times already it came with this like sticky stuff on it and now it's stuck on the cap and i don't know how to get it off and now i've got this like really weird sticky lid which is kind of weird i've used this a couple times already and i really really loved the way it looked on my skin it is definitely a fuller coverage foundation but it's very very hydrating and then the day that i wore it i actually went to michigan with my mother-in-law and she complimented my skin and my foundation so that was nice and this is a very affordable foundation and i feel like it looks so much like the bougier foundations that i wear it gives such a beautiful finish to the skin it covers nicely and it wears really nicely with my oily skin so far i've really been loving it i can't wait to wear it more i feel like the color too is pretty perfect down my neck really been liking that especially when i'm more fair i feel like you can see like pimples more when i'm more <laughs> i hate when i do my makeup on camera and i'm talking and i apply makeup right here because it does that noise but i feel like when i'm more fair you can kind of see like my imperfections more like my pimples and my veins and things like that so i've been really liking bringing my foundation down onto my neck because i just feel like i don't know i just feel better when i do that i've actually been getting a lot of questions about my microblading since i'm coming up on a year since i've had it done someone actually said are you upset that it faded away and it actually is com it's still there it's just when i got my eyebrows microbladed i asked her to do it very very natural so even when it was super fresh it still didn't really look like i had much done which is exactly what i wanted and it does look like it's gone but if i actually like go like this 
and push my hair so you can see that there's still a lot of shading in there. So I should technically go and get a touch up, you know, just to maintain and make it more impactful and stuff. But I don't think I'll get it done again just because the healing process for my skin, it took a really long time for as natural as I want them to be. I just don't think it was worth it for me just because I personally don't want anything too intense. But check out my video if you live in the Chicagoland area and you're looking for a really good artist who can do really natural work. You can get it more dramatic, just she does such a good job at making them look fluffy and natural and stuff. Check out that video because she is amazing and I've got all her info in there. For my concealer, I'm gonna go into the concealer that matches this foundation. It's the True Skin Concealer in the same color, 20 Warm Beige. It matches it exactly. This I also really loved when I've worn it. And every time I've worn that foundation, I've worn this concealer with it. So I'm going right here, right over here. I see other people like do this with their concealer. I'm gonna try it. I feel like that wouldn't do much for me. I don't know. Um, I'm gonna use my Sigma F03 brush and start blending this in. I broke my thumbnail at the gym the other day. I've been working so long at keeping my nails nice and long and fresh and I just do like regular manicures. I don't do like the no chipper acrylic or anything like that. And then I cracked this nail like in half. It was so weird. It was really long and like vertically half of it was gone. I was like, damn it. <laughs> so I uh, had an appointment today, get them done anyways. And at least now it <laughs> kind of matches my little nub thumb over here. This got cut off when I was one by the way everyone always thinks i've got like a weird thumb i don't know i mean it is weird but it uh it just got cut off i'm gonna go and powder my face as usual and then come back with bronzer so just went and powdered my face under my eyes and my t-zone i'm now gonna go in and bronze i'm gonna use the charlotte tilbury airbrush bronzer i haven't used this in a little while i've been using a couple other ones so i just kind of feel like using this one today and i'm gonna use my charlotte tilbury brush. Oh, this is actually the wrong color. That is my tan shade. I'm going to go into the medium. You can see it's very well loved. So I'm just going to get this in there and start bronzing up. Oh, this is such a pretty bronzer. Bronzer is probably one of my favorite makeup products. I feel like it's so fun to apply and I feel like it really brings the face together, warms everything up and just makes everything nice and cohesive. I am going to contour with Bone Beige from MAC, this contour color here. It's one of my favorites. I like it because it's kind of rosy, but adds the shadow at the same time. It's great for when I'm fair like this. So I'm just adding it here to the cheekbones, on the forehead. I quickly just went and contoured my nose as well. Now I'm gonna highlight. I wanna use this Flower Beauty highlighter. What is the name of this? Sunkissed Shimmer, Shimmer and Strobe palette. I think that's what it's called. They're gorgeous. I think last time I used it, I just mixed these two together. I might have just used this one. I'm gonna grab this color first and pop this here. Oh, you only need the littlest bit, let me tell ya. The last time I used this, I used the Desi spray with it and oh my gosh, those two mixed together, it was like, heaven okay i'm gonna add a little bit of the lighter color right there and then this is what i did i used all three then i'm grabbing the pinky one and kind of bringing on the cheek a little bit grab that middle shade on the nose and blend and do some cupid's bow action with that as well and then for blush, I have the Melt Honey Thief blush. I got this a really long time ago. I don't know if it's still available. It probably is, but it's just a very beautiful, like peachy honey colored blush. Oh, that's so pretty. It's kind of pinky peachy, like a rosy peach. And now I'm gonna go into the Desi Skin Mist. I'm gonna use this. I love, by the way, that she made this such a ginormous bottle because you can just, it is almost massive, but you're getting a lot of product. I really like the whole vibe of the packaging and everything, it's just so glam. So I have this new brow pencil from Makeup by Mario. It looks like this. And then it's got this like crinker upper thing. Oh, so fancy. It kind of just like comes up like that. 
and then it has a spoolie. So I have the color light brunette. Hopefully this will work. I'm gonna push these up and try to fill in my brows with this. So I really wanna pick your brain about my podcast. I haven't started it yet. Um, I have been putting it off because of the wedding and the honeymoon. Blah, 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 blah. I'm ready to start it. I've got all of the supplies. I actually bought all of the supplies earlier this year and I'm ready to begin. I have been listening to this one podcast from Makeup by Tiffany D. I've been following her for years. Like before I even started YouTube, I watched her and she was one of the YouTube channels that I felt inspired by to even create YouTube videos myself. So she and her husband have one on Patreon and I thought that was such a cool way of going about it. If I can remember correctly, I don't think YouTube does polls anymore. So maybe I'll pop it into the community tab for polls. You used to be able to do polls in the video. And if I can, I'll put a poll right up here, but I don't think you can anymore. I want to know what your thoughts are on doing it on Patreon versus doing it on like Apple Podcasts and Spotify Podcasts. Now, if you do have a Patreon, you can still listen to it through your other podcast provider. So I'm thinking if I just did it regular, like most podcasts, it would be free and you could listen to it on, you know, wherever you listen to your podcast app. But if I did a Patreon, it would be $5 a month for you to listen or watch because I would pop a video up there too. But it'd be ad free completely. There wouldn't be any ads, anything like that. What are your thoughts? What would you prefer? I would be posting once a week. Now, the other thought was I know Crime Junkie, they have their podcast that goes out regularly and then they have the Patreon group. And you'd get the same thing with both. It's just on the Patreon group, you would get the podcast for that week earlier in the week. And then they do have bonus content, but the bonus content was only like one five minute to nine minute episode a month or something like that. So that's also an option. I don't know. Let me know your thoughts. What is your favorite format for stuff like that? Do ads bother you with podcasts? I will be filming it though. And audio recording it so you can listen to it or watch it, whatever. The bonus too of having like a Patreon only group is that it would be more intimate. There would be less people listening and watching and involved and it can kind of be like our own little club kind of. So I do really like that aspect of that. So I don't know, I would love your feedback on this. If you have any ideas of maybe like utilizing both in a way, let me know. For my podcast, what I'm thinking is it's gonna be very, very casual and no rhyme or reason to it. How it's gonna go, at least how I plan on starting it off is just talking about random stuff and not having a plan. I never have a plan for things. So I feel like, you know what, why would this be any different? For my first couple episodes, let me know what topics you would like me to discuss. And you know, I've been putting this off for so long because so many other things have come up and I'm just kind of thinking, you know what, let me just freaking do it. I planned on actually having like a whole batch of episodes ready to go before even posting one, but I think I'm just gonna like freaking just go for it. Cause I really wanted this fall to be when I started and I haven't started yet. So I just need to, just need to do it. I kind of messed up this brow over here, but I'm gonna fix it with my paint pot when I prime. I love this brow and this one looks extra stupid. I don't know why I suck at brows so much. All right, let's do this eye first so I can see if I can fix this. Okay, so I just primed and then I set them with powder. I'm gonna use the brow gel from Makeup by Mario. I believe this is clear. And I'm gonna try to make these look extra floofy. So there looks like there's a big side and a small side. So I'm starting with the big side, just pushing everything upwards. Do the second layer. And then I wanna use the smaller side. Nice, this is kind of like soap brow texture. It's very, like thick and moving them up there. I like it. Brows are done, eyes are primed. Let's get into shadow. I really wanted to use the Modern Renaissance palette from Anastasia. I feel like this is such a classic fall palette. I mean, this is just a classic palette in general. I really wanna do another video with this and do like more reds and burgundies. I've been getting, been getting a lot of requests to do like a burgundy look. So I would love to do another tutorial with this, but today I wanted to show you how you can do an everyday look with this. I feel like because 
this half of the palette really stands out because it is more bold. This seems like a very bold palette, but there are tons of neutrals in here. So I really wanted to use this and do an everyday look and then maybe do another video doing a more dramatic look with this palette. And I feel like so many of us have this. If you don't have this palette, I highly, highly, highly recommend it. There are very few palettes in the industry that I think everyone would love or not everyone, but I just feel like the majority of people would love and would find useful. And this is one of those palettes. So it looks like this up close if you're unfamiliar with it. This came out quite a few years ago now, but I feel like it was the first of its time that came out with these like warm reds, pinky purples and stuff like that. So I have my Smith 237. I'm first going to mix Golden Ochre and Raw Sienna together. So this is Golden Ochre, this is Raw Sienna. I'm just gonna bounce between them and just pick up both and bring this in the outer corner and the crease. So I'm starting here, doing little circles, holding about midway on the brush, bringing this through and then focusing the majority of it out here on the outer lid. Just building up that color adding to it. Okay, doing the same thing on the other side, bringing it in the crease and the outer lid. I'm just really adding some nice dimension and I just keep adding to it. I love doing layers, especially on these lighter shades. I like gradually building up the color by just using the same colors and just layering them because they, they just really do layer nicely and then they get more intense the more you add. I'm gonna carry those down on the bottom lash line. You know the drill, look up in your mirror or your brain or wherever you wanna look and bring this down. Right now I'm just looking at my viewfinder. It's actually very handy having a viewfinder over there. I feel like though, once you get down, like putting your chin down and your eyes up, you really don't even need to look at anything. If you just go crazy, it'll blend itself out. I'm now gonna go into Burnt Orange which is this shade here. Pick it up on the same brush and I'm just gonna start deepening this just a little bit. I really wanna do kind of like a wearable fall look that's natural looking, but also says fall. So I'm using these warmer colors that scream fall. So this burnt orange and this, just the warmy tones that we're gonna be going for will give you that fall vibe. Same thing on the bottom. See, I'm kind of creating this point. I kind of like always do that shape. Really bring the lower lash line color like out here into my temple almost. As I'm blending like normally on the top, I won't like start out here, I start in here. But as I'm blending, it ends up kind of going out into the abyss of my face and kind of creating that shape. I'm gonna go into just a little bit of a smaller brush. I'm gonna pick up just a hint of warm taupe this color here, just to give it a touch of coolness. Just a touch, it will kind of deepen it up a little bit. And I'm just keeping this on the outer lid. I'm gonna add in this red color, just to give a very burnt-y sort of look. So I'm gonna take red ochre, and do the same thing. Pop this on the lid, outer part of the lid. I'm gonna bring this all over, just on the outer part. You can always go back in with that first brush and just really diffuse it. I don't know, anytime you take these sort of shades and you shear them out, it just reminds me of dirty leaves. I feel like I say that every year and I love the look of a good dirty leaf on the eyes. It's just grungy fall in the best way. This is also giving me like apple cider, like I need to go to a pumpkin patch and get a donut and some hot chocolate. Isn't that what that says to you? Maybe, maybe not. Does it say pink eye? I don't know. I love it though. And I'm really just leaving that inner part of the lid blank. I love looks like that, just doing like a very diffused outer corner that kind of just fades into nothingness on the inner lid. Bringing the tiniest bit of that red ochre on the bottom lashes. Blending this out with the first brush. I am going to take tempura and tap a little bit of vermeer into it. Just kind of go back and forth because tempura is more matte. It has kind of a slight sheen to it, but vermeer is like insanely sheeny. I don't want too much of that. So I'm mixing them together to give that nice 
middle ground. That's a little icy. I'm gonna add a little bit of Primavera, which is more golden. That's the other thing is they got something for everybody in here. If you've got more warmth, go with Primavera. If you've got more coolness in your skin, do Vermeer. But yeah, I'm gonna mix these together to create this highlight. This is why I like using my face highlight. See, cause that really, really stands out off of my brow and I don't like it to be that intense. I usually go with my face highlighter. Taking those right here on the inner corner. Yeah, it's so icy. Okay, I'm just taking this brush and bringing it up high just to kind of diffuse and darken up there because I just feel like that was so bright. And then diffusing this for eyeliner. I'm gonna go into my main squeeze. This is one of my favorite eyeliner pencils. This is Costa Riche from MAC. It is a very rich chocolatey eyeliner, but kind of pulls a little warmth in it as well. I love this, especially this time of year. So I am going to pop this in my waterline. Just kind of smudging this out. Okay, I'm just going in and curling my lashes. And then I'm gonna go into my favorite mascara the Makeup Geek Extension Effect Mascara. I'm doing no lashes today. I really am gonna focus on building this up. Can you even believe we're already mid-September? I feel like August just started, it's so weird. And here we are in September and we're in mid-September. It's just crazy. Time just flies. Just popping it on the bottom. For my lips, my Favorite lip liner for the fall is Hazelnut Tea from Laura Mercier. It gives, I mean, it looks really dark here and you can really build this up to be dark, but it gives a more burnt red, but still brown <laughs> look. I don't know. It's one of my favorite lip liners and it's very unique. So this is what it looks like. I actually just ordered this again because I couldn't find my other one. And it's just a necessity for this time of year for me. And I can only find it on the Laura Mercier website. I'm gonna apply this. I always overline like down here. I just got a comment asking how to line the lips and fill in the lips and stuff. Follow your natural lip line the whole way. So. I always start in the outer corner and drag it downwards. And then here, I'm gonna overline just a little bit like that and then connect it here to your natural lip line like that. Then for the top, same thing, connect right on your natural lip line right in the corner right here. My natural lip line right here goes out and then it kind of goes back in. So what I do is I continue this a little bit further and then I overline up the cupid's bow. You don't have to do that or you can, whatever you feel like doing. But then what I do is I overline the cupid's bow. This right here. If you're not looking to overline, you can skip this. And then I connect that to here. Instead of continuing this down this way, it would make this look really skinny, which that's also a vibe, but I connect it to where my lip line is over here. I'm also using my pinky as like a balance point. So I'm not just like free handing it drawing without touching my face anywhere else. You wanna make sure that you're using this to balance so you have control kind of like where you're coloring. Also don't feel pressured to like go in and do like a perfectly straight line. Nobody can do, I mean, unless you're like super pro, but I feel like it's very difficult to just go in and be like, whoop, one line perfect. I learned when I worked at Sephora, we had these like informational videos that we had to watch before going on the floor and working. And one of them was a makeup forever video and it taught you how to overline your lips. And it talked about kind of like rocking back and forth and sort of coloring like this over the same line and it will give you a straighter line and it will give you a straighter line. So if you feel like you can't achieve like a straight line or it's kind of crooked, work really lightly, hold further back on your pencil, sit on your face, <laughs> Sit. Hmm. But your pinky on your face or another, you know, lean on yourself. You can always touch up your makeup and just kind of like that. And now what you want to do is lay your pencil on its side, kind of like this, and start fading it in. So you can utilize all of this much of the pencil, not just the tip of it, but the entirety of it. It will give you a softer look and then you can get away with even using this as your lipstick. 
and it will last forever. But this is how I apply my lip liners under all my lipsticks, because then you have this base, and then your lip stays on all freaking day long. And I'm not even really touching the inner part of my lip. I feel like it doesn't end up even needing much because as you're dragging it in, it brings that color into the middle of the lip and you don't need to apply too much because it just does it for you. you go with your finger and kind of do one of these. I think I'm gonna add a little bit of spice from MAC. This is a little bit darker of a color. And I'm just gonna add this to the outer corners and see what this looks like. It's deeper and a little bit more brown. I like these lip liners on their own. I just tried applying a lipstick and I just wasn't a fan. So I'm just gonna do the lip liners today. And just make sure those are all nice and blended in. And I think that's it for this look. Okay, so this is the final look. I love the way it turned out. I'm actually pretty happy with the brows ever since I applied that gel to them. I feel like they look very bushy and very natural. This is one of my favorite looks to do around this time of year. I always do like a version of this because I just feel like it's nice and warm and spicy, but very wearable at the same time. The lip is a little bit more bold than I would normally do. Well, I guess that's not true. I've been doing more like bold nudes, but it is more color in my lips than I would normally do, except this time of year, I feel like it's just so, mm, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just so spicy. I love it. But yeah, you guys, that's it for this tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed following along, seeing if I got this look. Let me know what other videos you'd like to see from me down below, and I will see you very soon. Bye.